there! Welcome to this week's second lesson on the skill of wondering. My name is Mrs. Papineau and I'm really excited to be learning again with you today. Remember the book we started during our last lesson? That's right, it's called Bears in the Forest. It's a non-fiction book that follows the lives of these two bear cubs. Let's look back in the story and see if we can remember what we've learned about the bears in the forest so far. I think at the beginning, it showed the bears being born in the winter time. And as we turned the pages and read more of the story, we saw that the baby bears followed their mom out of their cave. It was still winter time, but things were starting to melt. And soon it became spring. We saw the pages in the book showing the signs of spring. Buds were bursting. And after spring came summer, right? And we saw the mommy bear eating honey and the baby bears playing in the background. We learned that baby bears can be pretty playful. But we also learned that there are lots of dangers in the forest. Remember this page when the mommy bear got pretty upset that the baby bears weren't listening and following her warnings? Mommy bear was really trying to teach her cubs how to stay safe. They scrambled up the tree to stay safe. And as we ended, we found out that the weather was changing yet again by looking at the pictures. We saw that the trees had leaves that were changing colors and all of the bears were looking around for as much food as they could find. Berries, nuts, they were trying to eat everything they could find. And that's where we left off yesterday. Now remember, we've been working on the skill of wondering. And yesterday, you did an amazing job of really thinking about some great questions before we read and while we were reading. Let's take a look back at our chart and see what some of those ideas were. Remember, when we looked at the cover, we had some interesting questions. We wondered if we will find out about the bears on the cover. I wonder if these are baby bears. And I wonder where the forest is. Now, while we were reading, we continue to ask some questions. I wonder why mother bear is angry. I wonder what dangers are in the forest. I wonder what other animals are in the forest. And then we wondered some more. I wonder where they will go in the winter. I wonder if bears eat anything else. Wow, readers, we did a lot of work last time, really thinking and asking questions while we were reading. Great work. Now, as you listen to the rest of today's text, I'd like you to think about whether any of these questions are getting answered. You'll have to be a really careful listener to see if they do or not. Also, I wanna remind you that I probably will ask you to turn to your partner and share some things along the way. Remember, a partner couldn't be somebody in your house. It can be a pet, it can be a stuffed animal, like my friend Fox, or you can even Give me a call and tell me all about your ideas. Are you ready to get started? Let's read the rest of the story together. I'm going to go back to the page where we left off. It was right here. Soon the days grow shorter and squirrels start to hide acorns. Bushes are bright with berries. Seed pods flutter to the ground Winter is coming. Mother Bear and her cubs eat everything they can find. Icy winds blast the forest. Mother Bear plods through the snow. Plod means she walks slowly and heavily. Mother Bear plods through the snow. Her cubs are fat. Their fur is thick. She chooses a shelter that is dark 
and dry, where they will sleep through the long winter months. When spring has woken the bears again, Mother Bear leads her cubs to the river. She follows a trail worn deep in the ground. Worn just means it's kind of been tamped down by all of the bears walking over and over. She follows a trail worn deep in the ground. Hundreds of bears have walked this way before her. Now readers, I'd like you to stop and think just for a moment. What have we learned about the winter time? What do bears do in the winter? Take a moment to share, share with your partner. I'll give you a call. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna find friend Fox. Hello friend Fox. What did you learn about what bears do in the winter? I know. So, friend Fox told me that the mother bear led the bear cubs to find a place that was safe and dry and dark because they sleep all of the winter time. Do you agree? Yeah, that's true. They sleep through the winter, don't they? Hmm. Let's see what happens in the spring. The river runs deep and fast. Mother Bear wades in. Wade means she walks through the water. Mother Bear wades in. Soon a silver trout flashes in her jaws. See the silver trout? It's a type of fish. The cubs are hungry. They wade into the river and catch their own fish. Wow, check it out. Mother Bear gobbles berries. Her cubs are playing where she can't see them. They are almost grown and soon they will leave her. Mother Bear has taught them everything she knows. Readers, what has Mother Bear taught the cubs in this book? What types of things did she take the time to teach? Turn to your partner or tell me. Give me a call. I'm going to ask my friend Fox. What types of things did Mother Bear teach her cubs? Hmm. That's right. She taught her cubs how to hunt fish and find their own food. I remember that. That's right. She also taught them to be careful in the woods, to listen for sounds and take care. That's right. She also taught them that in the wintertime, they have to find a safe, dry, dark place to hibernate over the winter. Great job, breeders. Wow. Let's discuss this book. Hmm. What happens at the end? How does the book end? Let's look back. Do you remember? That's right. The bears are almost grown and it's about time for them to leave their mother. What did you learn about bears that surprised you? Did anything surprise you today? Yeah, me too. I was surprised that baby bears stay with their mom for so long. Let's see, we had winter, spring, summer, fall, another winter, another spring. That was quite a while. Hmm, did anything else surprise you about the bears? I know, I was really surprised by all the different types of food the bears ate. Not just berries and nuts, but also fish. That surprised me too. Now remember readers, when you get to the end of a book, you don't stop wondering, you keep asking questions. And I'm wondering, hmm, where are these bears going to go? They're going to start living on their own. Is that something that you wonder too? Do you wonder anything else? 
Yeah, me too. I'm really wondering what the mother bear will do. Will she have more baby bears or will she go off and do something new? It would be really neat if there was a whole other book to tell us the answers, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be great. All right. Remember what we were supposed to do while we were listening to the rest of the story? That's right. We wanted to know if any of our wonderings got answered. Let's look back at our question board and see. Here's our wonderings from before we read. I wonder if we will find out about the bears on the cover. Here's the cover. Did we find out about these bears? We sure did. Way to go, readers. Let's check out another wondering. How about this one? I wonder where they will go in the winter. Did we get that question answered? We sure did. We found out that they go find a safe, dry cave or den to stay in, and they stay there all winter. Way to go, readers. What about this one? I wonder if bears eat anything else. Yes, we wondered that in the middle of the book when they were getting the seeds and the nuts and the berries. Do you remember what they ate toward the end of the story? That's right, they were eating some fish. So we answered that as well. Now remember readers, you might not find every answer to our questions in a book. And that's okay. The important thing is that you're asking them. And it means that you're making sure that your brain is working while you're reading. Awesome job. Let's talk about a few really cool words we talked about today in our text. Do you remember the word scrambled? Remember when the cubs scrambled up into the tree? Let's take a look at a picture that shows some kids scrambling up a ladder. Remember, when you scramble, you are quickly climbing up something kind of in a clumsy sort of way. So not perfect, a little bit clumsy. And then we learned another word. We learned this word, waited, waited. And remember, waited just means walking through water or something soft like water. These kids are wading into the water or you could say they waded into the water. Check out this next picture. There is a picture of an animal wading through something else. Can you tell? That's right. The fox waded through the snow. How about this picture? What is this animal wading through? That's right. This animal waded through some tall grass. Nice job. So waiting can mean walking through anything that's soft that you can make your way through. Now we're gonna play a game today. I'm going to read a sentence to you. And inside of that sentence, there are going to be some words that you can replace with one of our special words from today. Scrambled or waited. So listen really carefully and see which one would best fit. Okay, here we go. The kid climbed quickly up the ladder because she was being chased by a friend. That part where the kid went quickly up the ladder because she was being chased. That's right, let's try scrambled. The kid scrambled up the ladder because they were being chased by their friend. That makes great sense. And I can really see it using that special word. Okay, let's try it again. This time, listen to this sentence. The kid walked into the lake until the water was up to their waist. That's right, let's try waited. The kid waded into the water until it was up to his waist. Yep, weighted totally works. Way to go. See if you can use some of these words today or in the next coming days. Practice with them. It'll help it stick inside your brain. Okay, readers, let's move on to independent reading time. 
we've been practicing a few things after we read. One, we've continued with our wondering. And the other thing we've been practicing is retelling a story. So today, readers, I wanna give you a choice. You can practice by retelling this story, Bears in the Forest, or you can practice by retelling a story of your own. I'd like to show you an example that I did. I decided to retell Bears in the Forest. And remember, when we retell, we wanna think about the beginning, the middle, and the end of the story. We can use words like first, then, and last. That will help make sure the story is being retold in the exact order that it happened, instead of all scrambled up. So you can see what I did. I put the title of the book right on the top line. I wrote, Bears in the Forest. And I went ahead and I drew a picture from the beginning of the story and I made some words to go with my picture. So you can remember back in our story, it was right at the beginning when the bears were born. So that's what I drew. I drew the two bear cubs and the mom and the words I wrote are, the bears are born. They follow their mom into the forest. Then I started to think about the middle of the book and I wanted to think about what are some of the things that happened to the bears in the story. And so I drew a picture of some of the food that they learned how to find and I drew the setting, which was the forest. And I wrote, the cubs learn things from their mom, like how to find food and stay safe. So that's what I put for the middle of the story. And then I had to think, what happened last? What happened at the end? And I remember that the bears were getting just about big enough to move and live on their own. So I drew a picture of one bear living way over here and one bear living way over here. And I wrote, the cubs are almost grown and they will go live on their own. So readers, I would love for you to try this on your own today. Remember, this page is available in the packet on the school district's webpage, or you can even just do this on your own on a blank piece of paper. Decide whether you would like to try to retell today's story, Bears in the Forest, or whether you would like to retell a story of your own. Remember, being able to retell a story shows that you've understood what you've read. It's a great strategy to practice. It's been so fun to learn with you today. I am really looking forward to the next time we're together. Great work and great thinking. See you soon.